Good afternoon everyone. Today, we are going to learn about the biological and cultural evolutions of early to modern humans. But first, what is evolution? Evolution is the process by which different kinds of living organisms are thought to have developed and diversified from earlier forms of history of the earth. So, ang keyword dito is in development. Dahil ang evolution ay pagbabago ng isang ng isang species or culture from a simple to a more complex form throughout time. And now we are going to proceed to the biological evolution of hominins. Ano nga ba ang hominins? Hominins are the human branch of the apes. They are bipedal. So from the word bipedal means by bi means two, meaning that they walk on two legs. They have a large brain a complex social behavior, reduced canines compared to our ape ancestors, a prominent nose and chin, reduced eye ridges, shorter body hair compared to the apes, highly sensitive skin, as well as modified feet, thigh bones, pelvis, and spine. So, malalaman natin further on into this discussion kung bakit nga ba nag-iba ang features ng mga hominins compared dun sa ating mga ape ancestors. First off, Biological evolution is an evolution which is the result of natural selection acting upon the whole population. Meaning, kailangan mo ng isang malaking population para magkaroon ng biological evolution. Biological evolution relies on mutations. So, nagre-rely yung biological evolution sa pagbabago ng genes ng isang species na ma-observe natin sa susunod na, sa susunod na mga generations over time. So, dalawang, sa dalawang paraan, pwedeng mangyari ang biological evolution. It can go through natural selection and sexual selection according to Charles Darwin. According to Charles Darwin, the theory of natural selection is the selection directed by natural circumstances. Ang example dito is yung mga giraffes. So, ginagamit ng giraffes yung kanilang neck para makakain ng dahon sa mga puno. So, habang tumataas yung mga puno sa paglipas ng panahon, Ang tendency is mamatay yung mga giraffe na maliliit lang yung leeg at ang matitira ay yung mga giraffe na may mas matataas na leeg. And whoever is left behind are the only ones that can go through sexual selection. Ito yung tinatawag natin survival of the fittest. So kung sino lang ang kaya yung mag-reproduce, siya lang ang magkakaroon ng offspring at yung kanyang characteristics ang mapupunta sa susunod na generation. So yung mga species na namatay na before, hindi na sila makakapag-reproduce kaya hindi na natin sila makikita sa susunod na mga generation. So ito yung biological development ng humans Starting from pantroglodytes or mga chimpanzees, they have a cranial capacity of 320 to 480. Sila ay quadrupedal, ibig sabihin, apat na legs ang ginagamit nila sa paglalakad. They also have prognathism or yung nakaultaw yung panga nila dun sa kanilang skull. They also have barrel-shaped ribcage and C-curved spine dahil di nga apat na pa ang kanilang ginagamit sa paglalakad, so naka-curved yung kanilang spine. The next are the Australopithecines. They have a cranial capacity of 400 to 500. They have ape-like face, low forehead, and brow ridge. The canines are smaller than chimps, but still much larger than modern humans. And their pelvis and legs, leg bones confirm bipedalism. So, simula sa mga Australopithecines, nagsimula yung bipedalism na confirm na so, simula sa kanila, dalawang paano yung kanilang ginagamit. So, through evolution, from four legs, naging two legs na lang. So, dahil doon, na-modify yung pelvis at leg bones ng mga tao. Next is the Paranthropus group, which has a cranial capacity of 530. They are the extinct offshoot of the Australopithecines. Meron si ang mga ang prominent feature nila is yung kanilang mandibular lower jaw o yung kanilang panga na kita niyo naman na mas malaki consider dun sa mga dating apes. The next is the Homo habilis. They have a cranial capacity of 650 to 680. Sila yung unang gumamit ng mga tools na gawa sa bato. 
which indicates cranial capacity na ini-indicate nito na tumalino na yung mga tao, nagkaroon na sila ng paraan ng pag-iisip dahil naisip na nilang gumamit ng mga mga rocks and woods for hunting. Next is the Homo erectus, which has the cranial capacity of 750 to 1,225. They are the first to use fire and Archelian tools. So, from the, ho from the Homo habilis to Homo erectus, nagkaroon na ng discovery of fire. And from the next is the Homo neanderthalis, which has the cranial capacity of 1,600. So, kung makikita naman natin yung kanilang cranial capacity, nagsimula lang sa 320, naging 1,600 na pagdating sa Homo neanderthalis. Mas malaki yung kanilang brain compared sa mga dating species, kung makikita nyo naman sa size ng kanilang skull, and they have further reduced teeth. Mas lumiit na daw yung kanilang ngipin at yung kanilang panga. Ito ay dahil sa na-discover na nila ang fire, hindi na nila kailangan kumain ng mga matitigas na pagkain dahil naluluto na nila. Kapag niluluto nyo yung pagkain, mas lumalambot yung pagkain. Kaya, through time, yung mga early humans, pamula doon sa makakapal na panga at malaking ngipin, lumiliit na dahil hindi na nila kailangan mag-exert ng effort sa pagkain ng matitigas na pagkain. So, the last one is the Homo sapiens, which has the cranial capacity of 1,400. So, ito na yung pinaka-modern na humans. Ito yung pinaka-modern -moder -huma modern humans compared dun sa nakaraang mga species. And they are distributed globally.